and welcome to PSHE for you. Today we are looking at gambling, what it is and how it can cause harm. We will look at a couple of scenarios and discuss them with our guest to help us make informed choices. This is Dan. Dan, can you tell us a bit about who you are and what you do? Yeah, of course I can. Thanks, Jess. Uh, I'm <clears throat> My name's Dan. I work for an organisation called GAMCARE who are the leading provider of information, advice and support to anybody who is experiencing gambling related harm in any way, shape or form. I work as an education and training lead on the Young People's Gambling Harm Prevention Programme at GAMCARE and that our, our work at GAMCARE involves working across many different uh, types of support for people being affected by gambling related harm. So what sort of things do you do on your programme, Dan? So uh, on a day to day basis, I will be talking to different people across different aspects of the youth sector about the topic of gambling related harm. Now, sometimes this might involve going into schools and colleges, talking directly to young people about the impact that gambling can have on their lives. But also that could be running training sessions for professionals around the topic of gambling related harm. So ensuring that they're able to support the young people that they work with and make sure that they know the support options that are available to them. We also run workshops directly for parents who can be affected by gam gambling related harm, either through their young person or directly affected. But our aim is to cover every aspect of a young person's life. And another aspect of the work that we do within the programme is we run a support service specifically for anyone between the age of 11 and 25 who's worried about their gambling or the gambling of somebody else who's close to them. Fantastic. Thanks, Dan. So let's look at some scenarios then. So a young person has a friend um, who is obsessed with, with playing penny pusher machines in the local bowling alley. So is this gambling? So <clears throat> this would be considered a softer form of gambling. It would be considered a category D kind of gambling that young people can access from, from pretty much any age. Now, the reason they can access it from an earlier point is because the amount they're risking is significantly less. The amount they're potentially going to win is less. But for some people, this is their first introduction to the gambling world. The definition of gambling is to stake or risk money or anything of value on the outcome of something involving chance. Now, for us as an organisation, we look at things like in-game purchases in video games. So loot boxes, such as things like FIFA packs or crates that they can purchase on video games like Fortnite and Call of Duty or League of Legends. This also would incorporate things like cryptocurrency, because the idea being that in both of these instances, people are spending money with no guarantee of what they're going to receive in return. And even though they may not legally be considered a form of gambling, for us, the emotional feelings that somebody gets from opening a loot box or spending some money on cryptocurrency are very similar to the feelings that somebody would have when they're spending money on your more stereotypical types of gambling, things like roulette wheels or placing a bet on a sport on, or using some sort of sports betting as well. Fantastic. Thank you. So how does gambling become harmful to someone? It can start to become harmful for, for an individual when they start to lose control and aren't able to talk to the people around them. This is something that massively affected my life. I went from, at the age of 18, I went from putting bets on football matches with my friends to, by the age of 21, gambling thousands of pounds, resorting to stealing from friends and family, stealing from the job that I was doing at the time. And it had a massive impact on my, my mental health. And... That can go from somebody just becoming obsessive with it to the point where they have no control. I couldn't stop when I was winning. I couldn't stop when I was losing. I was chasing the feeling that I first had from the first time I won a bet, but also I was trying to recuperate all the money that I'd lost. And it was something that became really difficult for me in a really short space of time. Thank you for being so open and honest there, Dan. Um, so if we look at another scenario, so if a young person's mum is always playing online bingo um, and they're worried that she might be doing it too much, what can they do to help her? So gambling, and one of the big things that we always talk about is the fact that gambling doesn't just affect one individual. And how I would always describe it is sort of for a ripple effect. If I was to jump into a swimming pool, the people nearest to me are the ones that are most likely to be affected by it. But that doesn't mean that there are people a little bit further out that aren't going to be affected as well. Now, in this scenario where we're talking about an individual's mum, the normal thing to think about there would be that it would affect their finances. But that could also be affecting the relationships at home. It could impact their schoolwork because they might not be able to afford to go on school trips and have those other opportunities. It could impact their well-being because the food might not be there because of the priority of bingo coming above doing the weekly shopping. It could also affect the mother's employment and whether or not she's able to do the job that she's doing. And again, that can be impacting the development of that young person. 
So what they can do to help it is having those honest conversations about how they're feeling, but also understanding that there is support available. We run the National Gambling Helpline, which is a free telephone number available 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days of the year. Within, within that helpline, we also run our live chat function, which is available on both our GamCare website and the Big Deal website. Because we are fully aware that actually people don't feel that comfortable picking up the phone anymore. But typing into a phone, a laptop, a computer, a tablet, sometimes feels like a safer and more anonymous option. And then we have our young people support service. Now this service enables somebody to access support however they feel comfortable and start to improve the situation they find themselves in. Often the first step is to talk to a trusted adult. This might not be their parent, or in this case, the gambler themselves, but someone who they could, who can help them get the right support for you. So it could be a member of staff at a school, this could be a youth worker, it's whoever they feel safest and most comfortable talking to. It takes less than two minutes to fill out the referral form, and that can be the first step in starting to access the support that is available to them. Thank you for your help, Dan, and for sharing your experiences. Um, so what we've learned is there is support out there for, for people if they are worried, and, and it's important to reach out to someone to get the help that they need. Take care and see you again on our next PHSE for you.